All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we're going to talk about the AFC East. Uh, some things that Teron Armstead had to say, the offensive tackle for the Miami Dolphins, talked about some things regarding the AFC East. So he joined NFL Network's Total Access on Monday and said the focus in Miami is all about what the Dolphins can do in their own locker room, not worrying about what other clubs added or lost. So this is what he said. It's all in-house. It's all in-house. We don't really look at all the other moving pieces within the division or around the league because we feel like we have enough. We're talented enough. We're skilled enough. We're tough enough. We just have to do. It's now time to show improvements, to show we can win those big games and live those big moments. So it doesn't matter who's traded. We don't look at that. We have enough to beat anybody at full strength, and that's our mindset. It's our mentality. We have that confidence, but we have to just go out and do it. And the the Dolphins, they did lose some pieces in the offseason because of cap space. Obviously, their season didn't end the way they wanted it to, losing to Kansas City in that just cold weather. And that's putting it lightly. But, you know, in the article that I have here, talks about the star power that they still possess with Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Jalen Phillips, Jalen Rant, a lot of Jalens. Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Phillips, and Jalen Waddle, Brandon, uh, Bradley Chubb, sorry, and yeah, you got Tua Tonga Vailoa, but I know he's a uh, controversial figure in Miami, just you know because you got fans that like him, you got fans that don't like him, fans that say he's overrated, not very good, all that. I know I work with someone that's a Dolphins fan, and he just does not want them to pay Tua, but he knows it's inevitable. So that so. Yeah, there's kind of some conflicting things. You got people on one side of the aisle that think Tua is a solid quarterback, and then you got people on the other side that think he's not good and the Dolphins should go in a different direction. I think Tua does put up solid numbers, but you also got to look at who he's throwing to. And you've seen games where, especially when Tyreek Hill got hurt against the Titans, Tua did not look good after that. So... That's going to be a big decision on the Dolphins. But back to what Armstead had to say. Um, yeah, the Dolphins have a ton of talent. There's no question about it. They do. And they got off to a roaring start. And people were looking at them as like, oh, they could be the next greatest show on turf. Put up 70 points against the Broncos. And I was like, wow. Yeah, this team looks really good. But then... They got a reality check in Buffalo. And, you know, you played the Chiefs in the regular season. They were losing 21 to nothing. They did make it close. It was 21-14. That was a game in Germany. But still, the Chiefs were winning that game. Also, they played the Ravens, and the Ravens won by a few scores. And then they lost to Buffalo. And if they would have won that in the final week of the regular season, if they would have won that, they would have been the number two seed, I believe. So, yeah, it it just... uh, And then, of course, they lost to the Chiefs in Arrowhead in that weather. So the season kind of ended with a a thud. And I think 2024 is a big year for them because they got some doubters. The quarterback has doubters, especially... They got... And and I, I believe Armstead. They got the firepower for it. They, they have the talent to compete with anybody. But do they have the quarterback? And, again, like I said, I think Tua does put up good numbers, but is Tua the answer there? Right now, I'd probably lean towards no. But he's got to go out there and prove it. And, thankfully, last year, he was relatively healthy. The previous season, we thought his career could be in jeopardy with all the concussions and just how things were handled with that, with his situation. But he was relatively healthy, thankfully. But now we go into 2024, and it's a big year for him. I think it's also a big year for Mike McDaniel, too. Because the first year, he made the playoffs. He went against Buffalo. 
And they almost beat Buffalo with Skylar Thompson as their quarterback. Now, Josh Allen turned the ball over, which helped. That, that, the final score of that game, I think, was 34-31. to 31. They had a chance to win that game despite Tua being out. And then in 2023, you play the Chiefs. Well, technically you played them in 2024, but you get what I'm saying. They play the Chiefs, and it's just, other than that touchdown to Tyreek Hill, the Dolphins really never had a chance in that game. In Arrowhead against the Chiefs, you know, going from, you know, warm weather to that, just, it, it, it just, it wasn't going to happen. And the Dolphins were missing some guys in that game. I think on the defensive side of the ball, they were missing starters. So, yeah, it, it just, the, the odds were stacked against them. But now, this is a big year for them because I think with the Bills a little bit weaker, and there's still question marks with the Jets. This really is a golden opportunity for the Dolphins to take this division by the horns and win it and host a playoff game. Now, again, injuries can happen. Understand that. But I think the division's wide open. Now, we'll see. Again, we still got the draft. So the Bills, they're going to address the wide receiver position in the draft. And I don't think the Bills are going to be this awful team now with them trading Stefan Diggs. I think they're still going to be competitive, but I do think it kind of knocks them down a little peg. Knocks them down a peg. A little peg. A peg. And the Jets got better. Whether you want to say they did or not, I like the moves that they've made. I've talked about the Jets a lot the last couple of weeks. And like I said, I'm going to be in the minority and, and say they're going to go out and have a good season. The thing is, I don't want to look at the Bills and say I look at them as a third-place team in the division because things change. But right now, out of the top three, I like the Jets the best at the moment. And it's a risk because the players that they've added have dealt with injuries. But if it pans out, I think the Jets are the best team in the division. The Dolphins, I think offensively, on paper, they have the best offense. But I think the Jets overall, with their defense, I think you look at them as the best team. That's just me. The Patriots, they're in a rebuild. And we'll see what they end up doing with the quarterback position. Right now they have Jacoby Brissett and... Again, I, I talked about them this week, but supposedly they could they, they might opt to not taking a quarterback, which I think wouldn't make sense because I don't think Jacoby Brissett is the long-term answer, unless maybe they think it. And I think they just signed him to a one-year deal. So, but I, I'd, we'll see. I, I think they will draft a quarterback, but could be wrong. There's other positions they could address wide receivers same as the Giants don't want to bring the Giants into it but I did anyways but yeah the AFC East it was a wild offseason because you had the Bills and the Dolphins releasing a lot of guys Stefan Diggs recently got traded the Jets they made some moves they you know traded for an offensive lineman well they brought in three they traded for one they signed a couple they signed Mike Williams they traded for Hassan Reddick I mean there was a lot of moves that were made this offseason within this division the Dolphins, they got Jordan Poyer from the Bills because the Bills released him. They also signed Shaq Barrett. You know, they lost Christian Wilkins. They had to release him, and he went to the Raiders. And now apparently the Dolphins are looking to um, get Odell Beckham Jr. and be their number three wide receiver. They really want to make it happen, at least that from the headlines that I'm seeing. So... Yeah, and then they also um, they signed Jonu Smith as well, a tight end, who can make plays for them. Yeah, we'll see. But I, I Armstead's correct, though, when he says that they got the guys to compete with anybody. They do. They definitely do. But I think, the, again, the one thing that holds them back 
is their quarterback, unfortunately. Because we saw how Tua played against teams that were over 500. The Dolphins just couldn't, they couldn't beat them. Couldn't beat, well, they did beat the Cowboys. But the Cowboys had their own issues. They couldn't, you know, beat teams on the road, right? That, that was the issue with them last year. Or at least teams on the road with a winning record. The Dolphins just couldn't beat anyone with a winning record, but they beat the Cowboys. You know, they lost to the Chiefs twice. They lost to the Bills twice. They lost to the Eagles a lot of games they lost against better teams. And that was a knock. I mean, you beat the Broncos, you drop 70 points on them, but the Broncos at that point were not a very good team, and they still ended up finishing. I mean, yeah, in the middle of the season they were playing better, but again, the Dolphins are better than the, the Broncos. But I just didn't think they were that much better where they were going to drop 70 points on them. I still can't believe that happened. But, you know what, at least for the Broncos, it happened in a 1 o'clock game. It wasn't a nationally televised game. Because if you go back to, I think it was it was 2011 when the Saints, they won like 62-7 to over the Colts when Peyton Manning was out with the neck injury. And he had Curtis Painter starting. That was on, that was on Sunday Night Football for everyone to see. Now, again, we have technology so, I mean, it's not like we didn't have technology back then, but we have technology where, yeah, you could still watch the game even if you don't get it in your in your area. But, again, that was a 1 o'clock game. Saints-Colts at that, at, at that time was on Sunday Night Football. And the Saints won 62-7. So, yeah, that wasn't fun. That was not fun for the Broncos. But, yeah, I, I mean, with this division, though, Right now, like I said, I'm in the minority. Like the Jets the best. And the Dolphins, yeah, I'd probably put them second at the moment, but I I just don't I don't like putting Buffalo third. I I don't want to write off Buffalo because they still got Josh Allen and I still like they're gonna I still feel like they're gonna figure it out. Now that doesn't mean that I think the Bills are just gonna go to the Super Bowl and, and win it this time without Diggs. But I don't think the Bills are just going to be this bad team now all of a sudden. Because, again, you look at the – I've talked about this. You look at some of the games that Diggs had, and he really wasn't a factor, and the Bills won despite that. So we'll just have to wait and see. So before we go into our next break, just want to remind you guys again to tip or donate, get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So when we come back, we will talk about Stefan Diggs again, about how the Chiefs were the one team that the Bills were not dealing him to. So we'll get into that when we come back from our second break of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast.